Hello, you're watching Shalom World News. I'm Donna Villa from Chicago, USA. Here are the latest headlines from around the world. Ukraine said it faced fierce attacks in east from Russian forces reinforced with troops that have withdrawn from Kyrgyzstan in the south. The government in Kiev is working to restore power across the country after intense strikes by Russian troops on civilian infrastructure earlier in the week, officials said. In response to November 15 explosion that killed two people at a grain storage facility in Poland close to Ukrainian border, NATO ambassadors convened emergency consultations yesterday, November 16. From the information that we and our allies have, it was a S-300 rocket made in Soviet Union, an old rocket, and there is no evidence that it was launched by the Russian side, Polish President Andrzej Duda said. The House of the U.S. Representatives was narrowly won by Republicans on Wednesday, November 16, resulting in two years of divided government while President Joe Biden's Democratic Party maintained control in the Senate. Republicans have gained the 218 seats necessary to take control of the House after more than a week of ballot counting. The party crossed the finish line with the triumph of the Republicans in California's 27th congressional district. The victory provides Republicans the ability to restrain Biden's agenda and to start inquiries into the family and administration that might have negative electoral repercussions. Republican Kevin McCarthy, who was challenged for the position of party leader by Representative Andy Biggs and the House Freedom Caucus, was chosen by by his colleagues on Tuesday, November 15. Although it's not a given, he is likely to succeed Representative Nancy Pelosi as Speaker of the House in January. A bill that would nationally recognize same-sex marriage and offer legal safeguards for interracial couples was approved by the U.S. Senate on Wednesday by a vote of 62 to 37. If President Joe Biden ultimately signs the Respect for Marriage Act into law, it would repeal the Defense of Marriage Act, or DOMA, a 1996 law signed by President Bill Clinton that allowed states to refuse to recognize same-sex marriages that took place in other states and defined marriage federally as a union of a man and a woman. Because of the 2013 and 2015 Supreme Court rulings in the United States versus Windsor and Oberfell versus Hudges, DOMA has already been effectively repealed. The current plan would oblige states to recognize all marriages, regardless of sex, color, ethnicity, or national origin, that were entered into other states even if no state would be required to permit same-sex weddings. The New York Times stated that the bill has now been sent back to the House, which must approve and its updated version before allowing President Biden to sign it. Archbishop Timothy Broglio said on Tuesday, November 15, that he would be happy to meet with President Joe Biden, a Catholic whose views on abortion, transgenderism, and gay marriage are starkly at odds with Catholic teaching. He said this in his first press conference after being elected president of the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops. He said he would look forward to any occasion that he has to dialogue with political leaders here in the United States. I don't see my role as primarily political, but if there is any way to insert the gospel into all aspects of life in our country, I certainly will not miss any occasion to do that, Archbishop Broglio told reporters in Baltimore, where the U.S. bishops are having their annual fall assembly. Ever since the pro-lifers actively took part in the 40 Days for Life campaign from September 28 to November 6 with prayers and fasting, over 500 unborn babies worldwide were saved from being killed in the womb. Nearly 12 abortion facilities were closed, and six abortion workers had a change of heart, leaving their jobs in these centers. The prayer campaign took place in more than 588 cities across 41 countries. Being the first prayer campaign post-Roe, hundreds of pro-life activists gathered outside various abortion facilities to pray, fast, and offer counseling during these 40 days.
Since the campaign began in 2007, as many as 22,289 unborn lives have been saved and 131 abortion clinics have been shut down. In addition, 242 abortion center employees have abandoned their jobs and become pro-life defenders. Apostolic Administrator of Northern Arabia, Bishop Paul Hinder, has announced that Our Lady of the Rosary Church in Doha will remain open throughout the 2022 World Cup. The prelate stated that the Marian Church would be kept open throughout the 29 days for the fans who want to pray and meditate throughout the 22nd edition of the World Cup that will take place in the Middle Eastern country. During an interview with the Italian news agency SIR, the bishop shared his thoughts on the upcoming World Cup, which would kick off on November 20 and run through December 18. Bishop Hinder also expressed his hopes that the World Cup is an occasion for brotherhood, friendship, and human and religious exchange. Being the first church erected in Qatar, Our Lady of the Rosary Church in Doha is significant to the faithful across the Apostolic Vicariate. It can accommodate more than 2,000 people. The Apostolic Vicariate of North Arabia encompasses Kuwait, Qatar, Bahrain, and Saudi Arabia. Following an eloquent statement on the war against Russia by Ukrainian Catholic Archbishop Boris Gudziak, the U.S. Catholic bishops pledged solidarity and continued humanitarian help to Ukrainians. They made this promise during their fall meeting in Baltimore on Wednesday, November 16. In a speech, Archbishop Gudziak said that 14 million Ukrainians have been displaced and urged the bishops to help welcome more Ukrainian immigrants into the United States. The prelate acknowledged the U.S. government's support on the war efforts in his remarks. Archbishop Godziak also thanked the bishops for their assistance and mentioned that Catholic dioceses had raised $40 million for humanitarian aid. While Catholic Relief Services had given $100 million, the Knights of Columbus had given an additional $20 million. A new report reveals that the Catholic Church in Nicaragua has suffered nearly 400 attacks in four years. The 235-page report titled Nicaragua, a Persecuted Church, lists 396 attacks against Catholics. The report details the plight of the church in Nicaragua between 2018 and 2022, while it was ruled by Daniel Ortega and Rosario Murillo. Along with closing down Catholic media outlets, the dictatorship has also removed Catholic institutions from the nation, including Mother Teresa of Calcutta's Congregation of the Missionaries of Charity. In addition to removing the Apostolic Nuncio, Archbishop Valdemar Stanislav Summertag in March, the administration also placed the Bishop Rolando Alvarez of Matagalpa under house arrest and numerous priests were detained in the El Chipote torture facility. Benedictine nun and human rights activist Sister Mary John Mananzan has decried the human rights violations that occurred in Qatar while preparing for the highly anticipated FIFA World Cup. Sister Mananzan waved a red card against Qatar for the lack of respect for human rights and the exploitations that took place over the past 10 years. Reportedly, more than 6,500 migrant workers died in the construction sites of the stadiums for the World Cup. Almost all of them were from India, Pakistan, Nepal, Sri Lanka, and Bangladesh. The campaign, launched by the Filipino nun, is promoted by the German church through NGO Missio. The church is decrying the exploitations and abuse of migrant workers who are forced to work in temperatures as high as 50 degrees Celsius and live in squalid accommodations. Many women domestic workers also face abuse in Qatar. The government of Nigerian state of Plateau said that at least 12 people were killed in an attack on a village on Wednesday. It was in Maikatako village that the unprovoked attack took place. 
Violence between farmers and pastoralists have been on the rise in recent years as the population increases and the demand for cultivable areas leads to expansion of farmland. This in turn affects the herdsmen as they depend on open areas to feed their cattle. This triggers them to confiscate the farmland using force. Last month, in the state of Benue, at least 23 people were killed in clashes between herdsmen and farmers. In Scotland, the Roman Catholic Church and the Church of Scotland have signed an important declaration, which is seen as a significant ecumenical milestone. The St. Margaret's Declaration was signed by retired Reverend Dr. Ian Greenshields, moderator of the General Assembly of the Church of Scotland, and Archbishop Leo Cushley of St. Andrews and Edinburgh at the historic Dunfermline Abbey in Fifth. The agreement was signed on St. Margaret's Day during a service at the Abbey to commemorate the institution's 950th birthday. Named after the 11th century St. Lee Queen buried in the Abbey, the St. Margaret Declaration is the culmination of years of ecumenical relationship between the two churches. Her Royal Highness Princess Anne attended the event along with 300 other guests. The declaration reflects the unwavering desire of both churches to continue their journeys together and to see the nation's divisions healed. The declaration, drafted by senior members of both churches, outlines the shared beliefs of the two denominations, which are rooted in the apostles. The Catholic Conference of Catholic Bishops of the U.S. has elected Archbishop Timothy Broglio as president and Archbishop William Lorry as vice president. In addition, the bishops named Archbishop Paul Coakley of Oklahoma City as the conference secretary and head of the Committee on Priorities and Plans. The fall General Assembly in Baltimore also witnessed the election of seven standing committee heads. Bishop Michael Burbage in Arlington was chosen to lead the Committee for Pro-Life Activities. Bishop Thomas John Paprocki of Springfield was elected as the chair of the Committee on Canonical Affairs. Bishop Joseph Bambera of Scranton was selected to head the Committee on Ecumenical and Interreligious Affairs. The chairman-elect of the Committee on Evangelization and Catechesis and the Committee on International Justice and Peace is Archbishop Charles Thompson of Indianapolis and Bishop Abdallah Elias Zaidan of the Maronite Eparchy of Our Lady of Lebanon, respectively. Bishop Barry Nestaut of Richmond is the chairman-elect of the Committee on Protection of Children and Young People, and Bishop Kevin Rhodes of Fort Wayne South Bend will chair the Committee on Religious Liberty. And those are your latest headlines. Do join us tomorrow. In the meantime, you can visit swnews.org for more updates. Shalom.